These large RV meetups like the RTR and Schooly Palooza and other things. What is the future of these things? Are they going to continue? What's up, live viewers? How's everybody doing today? All right, we're going to talk about the big meetups. That's right, the big meetups. Uh, now, this year, uh, the little snafu with Schooly Palooza and the Rangers coming and kicking everybody out, it kind of brought light to it. A lot of people are talking about all the meetups and what's going on, and uh, yeah, we're going to touch on that a little bit. But first, but first, let's talk about uh, Lady Bug Out. She made a very good video. <laughs> basically talking about um when you're when you're boondocking when you're uh out there and you're you're using the public land and even if you're just around people not particularly in the groups but she talks about when you're in the big meetup groups and everything but she gives you rules and uh, just common courtesy tips on how to be a good boondocker very good video very very well done Got some nice little scenery in between her just, you know, talky talky head stuff. Very well. I, this is another attractive young lady that I enjoy watching, and I think she does very good videos. And uh, she only does them like once a week, so you're not bombarded with them all the time. So you got to catch up with her, you know, because when she puts one out, it's, you know, like a week's worth of stuff. But she usually sits down. She has very good talking points in this one. Very good, very, very good information and uh, suggestions on how to be a good boondocker. You also want to be respectful of stay limits. In most areas, that's 14 days. And then you have to move on, I believe, at least 25 miles away from where you are. And the reason for that is so that others can enjoy the space that you are enjoying. And they don't want people to just move into an area and stay there for unlimited amounts of time. So be respectful of those stay limitations and there's plenty of other areas to enjoy just miles down the road as that is just as beautiful and even maybe more beautiful than you are so it's good to explore those and enjoy the different areas and that's just one of the things but i uh, played that clip because it kind of pertains to what i'm going to talk about here in a moment and that is all about these meetups and uh Paul, Paul Barger, he made another video, get, video bleh, yeah, easy for me to say, yeah, tripping over my tongue today, let's try this again, Paul Barger, <laughs> he made a video talking about Scully Palooza and uh, the future of some of these big meetups. What does Paul have to say? Today is the last day of Schooly Palooza 2022, and we are getting on the road today to get out of here. And I just wanted to kind of give you some thoughts on the event and where I think the event is going to, and just all the problems that have been going on with Schooly Palooza in, uh, you know, the old location that the or the the new location that they tried to move it to over by parker which is actually in california and just uh, a lot of the issues with this sort of event it seems that we're kind of outgrowing what is legally possible with an event like this if you're having a free event they still want you to pull permits and they want to charge you exorbitant amounts of money to pull the permits i mean i remember with RTR, they wanted Bob Wells to pull permits. And Now, I've talked about this stuff before. And again, usually when I say stuff about the RVers and what's going to happen and what I think should happen or could happen, ah, you're just some old blind guy sitting in your little studio in your mommy's basement. And you don't know what you're talking about. You live in sticks and bricks. You're not out here doing it. You don't know. Well, I've been saying this. I've been warning you guys for a while now. One thing I said a while back was the amount of RVers and, and full timers and people live in cars and buses and trucks and all kinds of stuff like that, not just RVs, but they have an impact on a lot of things, communities and everything. Um, just our silly little voting system with the, uh, <laughs> the electoral college and stuff. It goes on population and this and that and that. And, and how what states get how many votes and all this other crap. And now you have these people that that are 
live in wherever, but they have a residence in Texas or Florida or the Dakotas or wherever it may be, they have residence there. So you go to these little towns, these little some of these little states where there's five people, but according to the census and everything, there's a bazillion people there because there's all these people that never go there, but they're registered to live there because they're full time and they're usually in Arizona. The millions of them that are <laughs> bombarding court site, you know, that little town that literally does have a population of a couple hundred all of a sudden turns into millions because all the RVers are there. But it's just things like that. You know, when, when, uh, funds are allocated to different places for schools and all kinds of other things, population comes into effect. And people, oh, there's not an, oh, no, there's not enough. There's not enough RVers to make a difference. It's not going to affect anything in one breath. The next breath is it's growing by leaps and bounds and there's more than you think. So, you know, it depends on what you're talking about. If they're going to agree that there's a whole lot of them or not, but I think it does have an impact. The other thing I said was this something that is breaking records. Every year, year after year, more record RV sales than the year before. And then the next year, oh, more breaking records again, more RV sales than the previous year. Even during pandemic, when nobody has jobs and everybody's closed and you can't even go to a grocery store, we can buy RVs and there's still more people buying RVs and they're still breaking records. And I said... And I still think this, and I still say, and you're going to see it coming true, that if something like that is growing exponentially by leaps and bounds, it's going to be noticed. And whenever something is big and it's a, whether it be a fad, a trend or whatever, when it is on the upswing, what happens? People find a way to make money off of it. You're not going to be able to keep doing this without someone seeing dollar signs so that means yes all these big gatherings that keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger throughout the years rtr you can see it schooly palooza all these other ones it starts out kind of small and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and now people are taking notice the park rangers are taking notice the, the people in the towns are taking notice everyone's seeing this and they're going hmm Okay, well, we used to let it slide. Yeah, there's rules where you got to do this and you got to do that. But we used to let it slide when it was just a, a handful of people. And then when it got to a couple hundred, we, we still, eh, we kind of looked at it, but we let it slide. Now that it's thousands and thousands and it keeps getting bigger. Okay, now we're, it's time to make money. We're going to go and look. You got to pull a permit. You got to have dumpsters. You got to have porta potties. You have to have this for every so many people. You have to have a, a, a porta potty. You have to have the, you have to have these things. You got to do it. And now everybody's getting all upset. Well, I told you it's going to happen and more things are going to happen. The bigger this thing gets, the more steam it gets, the more it rolls downhill and nobody's stopping it. People are going to find a way to make money. I'm telling you. The Walmarts are like, no, no more free this, no more free that, because people are getting pissed off and they're getting fed up with it. People are getting fed up with people parking along the streets and parking in front of their million dollar views that they paid for and you pay zero for it and you're just going to plunk your ass there. And, and people are getting tired of this shit. So no overnight parking, no parking, no camping, no doing this, no, 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 no. If you're in a city, no, no, don't even come into the city. Because if we find you your car with a tent in the trunk, we're going to give you a fine and we're going to boot you out. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff, stuff is happening because you're going to have to pay to play. It's, it's not the free, cheap, and easy life now, as we are finding out, but it's not even going to be anywhere near the convenient, free, cheap, and easy place because you're not going to be free to go anywhere because people are saying, no, we don't want you here because we want to make money off this while we're all paying to do that. We're paying property tax. We're paying school taxes. We're paying this tax. We're paying that tax. We're doing this. We're doing that. You're not just going to go buy your little van or your car. And you're not just going to drive around and live for free because there's too many of you out there now. 
and you're starting to have an impact on all the rest of us. So we're going to make you pay one way or the other. We're going to make you to pay in a, to park in a little parking lot. We're going to make it impossible for you to park in Walmarts and other places along the side of the street. We're going to make it impossible for you. We're going to make you pay. And yes, BLM land, it's for everyone. And that is it. It is for everyone. And that's why I played the Lady Bug Out clip. Because it is for everyone. So when you people come in your by the thousands and have your little gathering and say, this is BLM land. This Bureau of Land Management, it's paid for by us, so it is for us. Well, yeah, just because you live in a van or an RV or a bread truck or a schoolie or whatever else, or even your little car, doesn't mean that you can go to the BLM land, plunk your ass down, camp out, and say, I live here now for, for free. While the rest of us that are paying taxes are paying to foot the bill for you to stay there for free. No, that's why you can only stay there for 14 days and then you got to drive your ass down to the desert for 25 miles and plunk your ass there for another 14 days and then move. Because if I feel like grabbing the old lady and saying, hey, let's go rent a van and go out to the desert and go to BLM land and plunk down for the weekend, we can and we should be able to because it's for everyone, not just for RVers or people that can't afford anything and are forced to live in their car. No, it's not just for you. It is for everyone. So everyone should be able to go there and enjoy it without having to be overrun by a couple thousand people that want to have a little get together and hang out. Is there anything wrong with the little get togethers? No, it's great. It's awesome that you guys all get together and hang out and meet each other and meet other YouTubers and meet other schoolies and meet other. That's fine. But that's why you have to pull permits and do this and do that and do the other thing. So we can say, Hey, we know at this time, there's going to be a whole big chunk of the BLM land that these people are going to be on. And they're going to have all the things they need. So we don't have to worry about people dumping their tanks and throwing their garbage around. They're going to have porta potties and they're going to have, you know, even though they're so supposedly self-contained, we're going to have porta potties. We're going to have dumpsters. So there's not all the shit laying around. So when other people that aren't full time living in their vehicles want to enjoy the BLM land that is for everyone, not just for full time RVers or people living in their school, you order cars everyone so everyone can enjoy it without being again overrun by people partying and playing loud music and you know having whatever fun that they're going to have because everybody knows that you come in and you don't you know park here and then okay i'm going to drive a mile away from this guy and i'm going to park here and the next guy's going to drive two miles from me no everybody's all together and they're crammed in there and they take over a big spot and they're going and they're coming and they're going and they're dumping their tanks and they're doing this and they're running generators and they're doing this. And for someone that just wants to go and be, to be stuck in, you know, to show up at a spot and then all of a sudden they wake up the next morning and all of a sudden, holy shit, I'm surrounded by thousands of people. Yeah, it's not, it's not fair because again, the land is for everyone, not just you special people that were touched by the hand of God and put down here to live the free, cheap, and easy life. No, it's for everyone. Public land. For everyone. Even us stupid people that live in homes and sticks and bricks that go to work and pay taxes and <laughs> all the other stuff. Yes, even for us dumb people, if we want to get away and use that land that we all pay for, we should be able to use it too without you guys coming by the hordes to invade us. Now, again, is it, is it awesome that you guys get together? It is, but I've been warning you for years that if, as this lifestyle grows and grows and grows, you are putting the big sign that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger with the arrow that going, look at us, look at us, look at us. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. It's not just a hundred now. It's thousands and then millions and you're everywhere and people are going to notice and people are going to make money off of you and guaranteed 
This is just the beginning of it. These little gatherings, they're going to say, hey, okay, you're not going to have that gathering unless you pay. Oh, it's, it's, we're not charging anything. Not my problem. You're not going to have it unless you pay. More things are going to come. You're not going to do this unless you pay. You're not going to be able to drive it, go into the RV place and go, hey, I want that big class A. Uh, do you have a special endorsement? I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming because this thing is getting too big. More and more people are doing it. YouTube, TikTok, everything else on the internet is pointing a light at it, pointing a big arrow on it. And you guys taking over the BLM land is pointing to it, bringing light to it, putting that big magnifying glass over it. People are seeing it and people are going to go, I'm going to be able to make money off this and we're going to do it. Whether it be the government, the local government, or just other little entities that go, there's a way to make money off of this. We can do it. We can definitely make money off this because there's way too many people doing it and we're not getting paid. And trust me, we're going to get paid. So these big gatherings, I'm not saying that they're, they're going to stop, but I think there's going to be a little bit uh, more hoops to jump through. And you're not going to see too many more of these organized ones that get big and big and big. And that's why I always say that Lola Palooza, Lola has it right. She goes to a state park. They have their rules. She's not making up the rules. There's so many campsites and that's it. When it's full, it's full. So if there's 30 campsites, there's going to be 30 people. You can't say, okay, well, there's going to be 9,000 next year. It's not going to be that way. And I think that's the smart thing to do. Keep it controlled. Keep it so, oh, yeah, if you got to pay a couple bucks to get in or the daily charge or whatever it is, you just got to pay it because that's just the easy way to deal with it. The All the facilities are there. She doesn't have to worry about pulling permits and doing this and making sure. That, nope. All she has to do is make sure that everybody cleans up after their ass before they leave. But then again, you know, it's kind of in her name, but you're making the reservations. So it's all on your ass. It isn't, you know, it can't just get bigger than the place because there's only so much, so many spots and that's what it is. So I think that's the way to do it. And I hope, uh, other people find different ways. To have your gatherings, whether it be just an unofficial, hey, <laughs> let's meet up here. But I think these organized things are uh, are not going to be that that prevalent anymore, at least not on BLM. You have other ones, you know, descend on band, and there's all other ones that are on private land, and they have, you know, they, they do all the things that they're supposed to do. And then, yeah, you got the van build that went from the van build to this big giant, well, nothing. It was... uh promoted that was going to be this and that and the other thing but it turned out to be nada because his eyes were bigger than his wallet and uh reality so this big summer festival at six hundred dollars a head to spend the time at uh the van build that ain't happening because yeah to do all these things like have stages and have entertainment and have all these people and this it's going to cost a lot of money and he's getting in over his head and he's seen it. And now all these other folks, whether they want to admit it or not, they're getting in over their head now. Times are changing. They're coming after you. They're coming after you because they want money. They see a chance to make money and they're going to get money. And you don't have to believe me. Just watch and see. It's going to happen again. Hey. This is Blind Views and thanks for watching. No. <laughs> this is this is blind views and this is how that's how I see it. That's how I see it. <laughs> you sure about that? Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not so convincing. <laughs> this is blind views and that's how I see it. That's the way I see it. Oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is blind views and that's the way I see it. What we do here is go back, 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 back.